Hey, happy Thursday, everybody. Thanks for joining me in the card closet for another episode. Got all the shelves put up. Finished the last ones tonight while I was listening to Baseball Collector do his auction of some of uh, Blue Jacket 66's dad's collection, the basement collection. So it was good background going on while I worked on the last one. And so this is kind of what the side of the room looks like that's got the shelves and the beast. So I ended up with one shelving unit for basketball with a lot of growth opportunities because basketball sets generally have the least cards in them. Another shelf unit here for football. Still got two shelves on the bottom to fill, so lots of growth there. And then the one I showed that has all the baseball in it, that's full. And then the second one with baseball from 2016, complete set up to the current, and then all my Red Sox team sets that aren't slabbed. So these turned out really nice. I like I like these U-line shelves because they're so slim to the wall. They basically stick out from the wall the width of a binder. And that's it. So these shelves, if you're interested in them, they're from U-line. You can get them online. They're $280 for the first one and $270 for every unit you buy after the first one. And they're made of steel. They're black. These happen to be three foot wide by six feet tall. You can get them three by five, three by four, and three by seven, which I thought about doing, but I realized if these things went all the way up to the ceiling, because we've got this little box in the ceiling for all the utilities upstairs to run through, if the shelves went all the way to the top, I would lose the one and only place I have to display. And I'm, I'll figure out cool stuff to put on top of these, but it's really the only way to add character to the room is what I put up on top there. Otherwise, it just looks like library. So I went with the six footers. So really happy with those. The shelves, and I'm not going to be able to get down underneath and show you, but this edge of the shelf here curls down and then it goes back up. So it's like a U, a very tight U of steel. So it is basically double thick on steel. And I don't think these shelves are going to go anywhere, even with all this weight. So pretty excited about that. So a little bit plans for the rest of the room here. One of my co-workers is coming up this weekend from Louisiana and he's got a couple of those wall cases where you can display, um, I don't know, about 60, 70 cards in each case. And I'm going to put one of those on each side of the window. They're black, so they'll look sharp with the shelves. And they're the kind that have got the UV protected glass on them. They swing open and uh, you can put stuff in them, like display your cards and not worry about the fading or anything like that. Uncovered this. This had been behind the card table before. How many of you have these old pesky telephone jacks in your walls that you never use anymore? I'm going to pull that out and cut it up, cut it off and uh, put a flat panel on there and paint over it so it's not so noticeable. And swing around to this side. So that nook there used to have a desk in it when my daughter had this as her bedroom. Then we ripped that out and I had a chest of drawers back there which I kept all my card supplies in. But now I'm going to build some kind of shelving system back in there that will house white boxes. So thin slots of shelving, just thick enough for a row of white boxes. And I think I've got enough room there for one white box wide plus a narrow white box wide on each shelf. And Walkenbach, shout out to Walkenbach, he's helping me out with this. He has sent me some pictures of the shelving 
system that he and his dad built at his place for white 5,000 count boxes. It's exactly what I want to do. Mine won't be as majestic as Brian's, but it'll be something that perfectly fits back into this little nook. And uh, because the nook is a few feet deep, it'll be the perfect depth for white boxes. So looking to do that. And then I'll move the chest of drawers into the closet. So that's kind of my plans for the card room. But while I got you here, I got to show you a few cards. I'm going to do this freestanding here, literally. So these all came in this week. Ended up getting this uh, 2011 design of Roger Clements. And this is Topps Archive or Topps Heritage. I'm not sure which. But I like, I like getting Clemens in a new design. Next up, we have Topps Prism. I'm sorry, Topps Chrome Prism Refractor. Get out here in the light a little bit, show this off a little bit better. Masataka Yoshida. He's been on a big slide lately. Dropped his average from around 320 down to 294 at one point. He might be up to 297 now or something. So he's been slumping. Hope he can pick it back up. These prism refractors, I'm finding, have a lot of printing issues. And the biggest issue of all is black lines, print lines that run horizontal. And the buyers on eBay know the difference. The ones that are going cheap have the black lines, so I have to be real careful. Here's an interesting one. Top's finest X-Fractor of Manny Ramirez from back in the day. Love that. And then here's my favorite one. 1960 Bazooka Gum of Jackie Jensen. I just love that card. Jackie Jensen is not in the 1960 top set. And I wanted a Jackie Jensen. Very good player. I wanted to get one from 1960. And so I went with the Bazooka. And these are not cheap. I mean, they're not expensive either, but they're not. They're not cheap either. And, you know, I think I paid maybe $15 for it. So that's not terrible. But Jackie Jensen cards don't generally go for anywhere near that. So definitely a markup for the for the bazooka. And it's trimmed, obviously cut out of the back of a, a gum box. And you can see the dotted line around most of it, which kind of is something I look for. I don't like them trimmed in any closer than that. So those are my pickups. And this is how the card room is looking. Talk to you all later, everybody. Bye.